If you don't have children or don't have kids in school, you may not realize how much the classroom has changed from when you were there. It's not just technology, though, that's changed. Schools are now required to do much more with less. It's the kind of job where the day starts long before. Lots of guys go a lot, lot further than I do. Day breaks. I've drove the bus since, since my first day here, 11 years now. Landon Lewis gets to watch the sunrise as he picks up his portion of Ellick Public Schools 300 some kids. But Mr. Lewis is not just a bus driver. Are you ready for today? All right. His day job is teaching music. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade the years I've been teaching for anything. We came to Ellick's to see what makes a small school tick. And because more than 60% of all kids in Oklahoma go to a school that has less than 1000 students. Really all about 10 years of my life uh, I've been here in Ellick's. Isaac Byrne is now the elementary school principal of the elementary school he attended. He's also co-athletic director and <laughs> transportation director. During the course of the day, I could work on uh, scheduling athletic events, scheduling transportation, um, all those types of things. So it, it can go, the day can go pretty quickly. With everyone doing a little bit of everything, the problems in education can be amplified, like the teacher shortage. Selling a job as a teacher isn't as easy as it used to be, and trying to convince someone to move to a town that's well off the beaten path? No, this probably where, uh, not a place I would look, but I, I wouldn't change it. Sharissa Byrne is a city girl who learned to love a small town, in part because her husband wanted to move back home. If you haven't figured it out, He's the elementary principal. I, I think every teacher in a large school or every administrator in a large school should visit and take a, a role of a small school teacher administrator. Ellix actively recruits teachers. You can like grab it and move it. But the school is also focused on keeping the teachers it has despite low salaries. People say sometimes we're being selfish and that's not a selfish thing. Um, we have families too that we have to support. Valerie McCauley has been teaching in Ellix for 11 years and she has her master's degree. After any working anywhere for 11 years, if you're making $35,000, that's a hard pill to swallow. In Ellix, teachers are rewarded with retention bonuses. That helps, but it is getting harder to be a teacher. Sometimes, you know, kids ask us, you know, in your honest opinion, should I be a teacher? And it's hard for me to tell them yes. It, there's a lot of struggle. Macaulay's classroom is unique. It's the STEM class, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. They start to understand why, you know, they're they're learning algebra and why they're learning biology. We try to do a little bit of the hands-on in here. Not every school in Oklahoma has a STEM class. It's funded through Career Tech rather than the Public Education Fund. But in here, students get the hands-on that's missing from classrooms focused on teaching to tests. It doesn't matter what field you're in, you're always thinking about things, you're always inventing. We stopped teaching the things that made us great and started focusing on those bubble answer sheets, and I think it's it's hurting our, our education. Ellick Superintendent Dr. Jason James says unfunded mandates and tests that promote recitation rather than retention have taken away from true educational instruction. If you want a society full of test takers that can do uh, multiple choice test take tests, uh, then we're doing a really good job of, of meeting that need. Um, I do not believe that we're doing a very good job educating the whole child. Some of the educational problems don't need more money to fix. Some do. But most of all in Ellix, we learned what schools need most of all is support. We have to, we have to really come together and stop and dial down the rhetoric of um, casting all the problems of society on the teacher. And support is something the tiny town of Ellix has in abundance. Everybody does come together, whether it's whether it's athletics, academics, or the simple of, of doing some construction on the school. So everybody helps out. Keith Alcorn owns the feedlot, the best barbecue in Ellix. He's also on the school board and says the community supports the school. The community's growing so much, it's just, it's huge. And that support keeps the entire town alive. It is the community connection that makes small schools like Alex survive. Doesn't matter if we're having a Christmas musical, our community comes out and supports our kids. And without that, um, 
education is very difficult. Ellix has to tackle the same problems as big and little schools all over the state, but the solutions to those problems so far seems to be a one-size-fits-all approach. Go! We're trying to go about solving a major problem um, with, with solutions that, that I don't think have a, a very big impact in the problem. It's hard to know if Ellix is the exception or the rule when it comes to small schools, but Dr. James believes his school's success is a team effort, from teachers pulling double duty to the community that is fully invested in the next generation. After our visit, voters in Ellix overwhelmingly approved a new bond measure which will build new facilities that promise to serve both the students and the community as they continue to be partners in the future. Phil Cross, Fox 25 News.